Good day, Lydia and Mason and Bella, Chloe Blake, Andrew, Natalie, and Nathan. That's the one. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. So this, we're doing Come Look With Me again, enjoying art with children. Oh, I always go to the um, table of contents first. This is the title page. Here's the table of contents. We have done um, these here. This is really cool. Now we're at Edward Manet and his Ga Saint Lazare. And I am not pronouncing it with a good French accent. We're going to go over a lot of pages real quick. And this is the picture that we are going to be looking at by Edward Manet. All right, let's see once what he looked like. Edward Manet looked like this man here. See his paintbrush in his hand? All right. This is one of the pictures of Edward Manet. We're going to put him right next to this picture here that he painted of Gar Saint Lazare. All right, that was my attempt at a French accent there. I'm not sure how good we did, but we tried. So the French word Gar in the title of this painting here means railroad station. And Gar Saint Lazare is the name of a railroad station in Paris because this particular man who painted this was in Paris when he was painting it, and he is a Frenchman. When the French artist Edouard Manet painted this picture, train engines were running by by steam by power in in this. They were they were powered by steam, okay? So here's all of this steam going on in the background. The billowing whites and grays beyond the fence show us that a train is in the station. The little girl is watching the action. See her there? She's looking at the trains coming in. And this woman pauses from her quiet reading and looks at us. Manet painted more than a hundred years ago in a style that continues to inspire artists to this day. He was one of the first artists to give as much attention to how a painting was painted as the story it told. In his time, most people didn't like his bright colors. Now, they think that this is bright colors. Can you believe that? Bright colors today are orange and red and all of this. and. These blues and whites are considered bright colors back then. They were bright colors and easy to see brush strokes. And if you would look really, really close, get your book out, you can see that some of the brush strokes perhaps. Manet's style gives the painting a feeling of motion and fills it with light. Okay, so we're looking at this particular picture and let us see in there, observe some things. Why do you think the woman and girl are here? Now, where are they? Right, they're at a train station. They're sitting there and it looks like maybe they're waiting because she has a book. Look at that, she has a little puppy on her lap too. So she is sitting there and she's in there for the long haul and the little girl is standing and looking at the train as it's coming in, possibly because trains are interesting, but possibly because she's waiting for somebody to come off of it. That's the next question. Why is the little girl looking so into at what is she looking at so intently? Probably the train, don't you think? Yeah, I think so too. She's looking at this train and probably I think she's looking for somebody to get off of it. Can you find the color red in this painting? Oh my goodness. There is a lot of colors. Where is the red? Look close, look close, look close. There's some red back here in the background. There's some red in the flowers on her hat. There's some red over here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. A fan, it looks like. There is a little bit of splotches of red throughout the painting. Now let's describe the dog. You describe the dog to me. Okay. All right. It's a white dog. It has a patch on the eye. It's probably a little puppy. Is that something like what you said? Why do you think there is a bunch of grapes in the lower right-hand corner? Let's figure this out. Left-hand, right-hand, lower right-hand corner. There's grapes. Why do you think that the grapes are there? Why did he paint grapes there? What do you think? 
You know what I think? Let me tell you what I think. I think that they are here for such a long time that this woman made sure that she had a snack. Does your mother give you a snack sometimes? Is, the, is your snack ever grapes? I like grapes. Grapes are green or purple. We're going to draw some simple grapes today, and this is what it's going to end up like. So let's get a clean piece of paper. Ask mom for one. And with this one, the basic shape we're going to use is a circle. We've been doing different shape drawings, and the basic shape is a circle. Circles are hard to draw sometimes. So let me just tell you, you can get a stencil from anywhere, but if your mom has washi tape, that's a good stencil on the inside, and that's what we're going to use. I'm going to use the smaller washi tape so that my um, grapes are not huge. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do a very simple one. So we draw a circle. Do you see my circle there? Okay, I'll try and draw darker on the next one. So when the next one, I'm going to go in there and see, see what I didn't go all the way through. Because this particular grape is in the back of this grape here. All right, this one's up in the front. All right, so let me do another one and we'll show you. There's two of them just the same way. All right, we're going to do a bunch on this one. We're going to do three. And I'm not going to try and cross any lines with this. Now, if you do, you do. That's okay. No problem. But go ahead and draw your circles to make your bundle of grapes. Or a bunch of grapes. Or what is it? All right. Now what we need to have is we need to have either a stem or some leaves or something like that. So I'm going to draw leaves. Now this is going to be a little curvy, all right? And then I'm going to come to a point and I'm going to come back down just two curves. And if I draw a line in the middle of it with a curve, it looks like a leaf. Now that might be a little tricky for you, but see what you can do. Maybe mom can help you. All right. Boom. Two leaves. There we have a bunch of grapes. Now, when you have grapes, you have to have the green leaves. Of course, leaves are green when the grapes are ripe. And so I'm just going to go and color this in. And I wanted to do this with you for a couple of reasons. One, because grapes don't look so exciting when they're not colored in. And two, I wanted you to see something. Because the direction that you color gives you an idea or a feeling of the shape. So if you go this direction, and I'm just going to the edges here, and but I'm going this way, it gives you a feeling that the, the leaf is going in that direction. I'm going to go over all of the lines that you can hardly tell with a dark green, okay, so that you can see the outline of where they are. And you can, ooh, I missed. Okay, there we go. Well, now I've got to do another one just like that. Now it looks like I was supposed to do that. And if I fill that in, go ahead and listen to beautiful oops in the stories. And you can see once I just beautiful oopsed and fixed it all in the same spot. All right, so now I said I like purple grapes. So here we go, purple grapes. So we're going to go the same direction that if we can. So I filled it in and now I'm going around the outside on this one. So this one, I'm going to go around the outside, do two lines around the outside, and then I'm going to fill it in. So either way works out perfectly, whichever you want to do. But the thing that's interest or that you want to try and do is for the most part, you want to have all of your um, lines going in the same direction in each grape. Don't color all the grapes at the same time. Color one grape at a time and get all of the grapes going, all of that grape with lines going in the same direction, except for around the edges. That's going to be hard to do. So we're going to, we're just doing it like this so you can see. So most of these I did around the edge and then I'm doing this one. This one here, we'll go back to this first way that I did it. I get into a habit, and that's the way I do it the whole time. 
All right, well, I try. We're going to go back to habit. Now, I have them going in this one is this way, this is this way, this is this way, but every single grape is going in the same direction. Now, I don't have a darker purple, but I have black. And so I'm going to go over those grapes with my darker color so that we know exactly where each grape is. And notice, just like how I did it when I was tracing it with the trace thing, I'm not going over the, um, the other one, other grape that's on top of it, because this is behind it. Now, if you want to be really, really fancy, put a couple, just a little bit of a square, a couple of lines, if you can do it with your marker, in the same corner of each grape, and it'll give it a little bit of um, depth to it. There you go. Grapes from the picture that we were studying where the grapes were next to the little girl for a snack. Maybe you could have ask mom for a snack of grapes in this nice spring day. All right. Have a good day. See you next time.